So really quick about me, Matt Jemison, MVP in business applications. Actually was fortunate enough to be awarded that in June of this year, so still brand new MVP. And have a background in, background in SharePoint, but let's, uh, let's not worry about that right now. Let's go ahead and just jump into what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about custom connectors for Azure OpenAI. I wanted to point out first quickly, there are existing options if you're not wanting to create one. The first one in April actually mentioned this earlier was the create text with GPT. That's going to be an option for you and it's going to give you the ability to create a prompt and it's got some additional crafting materials in there, as you can see on the screen. One thing you can't do is you aren't going to be able to really sort of fine tune some of the behind the scenes settings on Azure OpenAI that we'll see in a minute. This is a great option, though. Number two is OpenAI independent connector. This one is very similar to what we're going to be working on today. The difference is this one actually connects to OpenAI. It doesn't connect to Azure OpenAI, but this is another great example of a connector that you can actually utilize today if you want. And last but not least, Microsoft has an awesome custom connector. It has a ton of capabilities. And for us, what we're doing is, is we're going to be creating more of a branding and a specific main chat completion action and so that's the reason for that why you might want to do this it's going to give you a lot of control as far as what you expose your users to maybe you don't want them to have as many actions here as you're seeing and also just good to sort of walk through the process and how that looks all right so let's just jump into it i was going to unveil giraffe geeks today which is my my counter to chris kent's warrior horses but we don't have a lot of time to talk about giraffes today so we will we'll just leave that there for now but what we're going to do is we're going to go hop over to the power automate studio and we're going to actually see that we don't see custom connectors because by default they're not going to be there you're going to need to jump over to more discover all and here you're going to actually be able to see them i'm going to actually just pin it and then i'm just going to click on custom connectors so make custom connectors your friend in power automate I'm going to click on new custom connector. We're just going to do a blank connector and we're just going to call this giraffe AI. And we can upload an image here if we want to. And so we have, let's see here. We'll just go ahead and we'll just use this one. And we will go ahead and leave that blank. Now we're going to jump over to Postman for a second here and we're going to be copying a lot of stuff. You are going to have when you create a resource in Azure OpenAI, you're going to have a host URL. And so what we're doing right here is we're grabbing that and we're going to set that as the host. And this base URL is going to be forward slash. So this is going to vary for you. The authentication that we want to use is API key. And so we can give it a parameter label of API key, but we want API dash key as our actual value here. Now, from a definition perspective, we want to create one definition. We're going to call this chat completion, and we have to give that an operation ID. We'll call it chat completion. And then what we want to do next is we want to say we want to import from sample on the request. It's going to be a post, and it is going to be this URL. And so we're going to copy this URL over here, and we're going to go to the URL. One thing that's going to change here, and really kind of one of the keys of the demo, there are a lot of different models in Azure OpenAI. And so what we're actually going to do is we're going to get rid of GPT-3.5 Turbo, and we're going to actually set this to the brackets model. This is going to give us the ability to change this. So that's going to make that dynamic. We'll go ahead and do content type application JSON. And then for the body, and again, this is why I've got Postman up here, I'm going to go ahead and just copy. This is an example body that I'm actually sending over to it. So we're going to go ahead and say that here, and then we're going to go ahead and click import. OK, so now that we've done that, we're going to make a few quick changes. If we go over here to model like I talked about, we can actually we could say yes, it's going to be required, but we can go down here and go to static and we can actually say GPT-35 Turbo, GPT-35 Turbo 16K, GPT-4 and GPT-4 32K. I highly recommend when you create your models in Azure OpenAI, the deployment name, give it the exact same name of the model because that makes it a lot easier to sort of predict. Now, if your users are using something different, they can override that with a custom value, but this is gonna give us a list of options to choose from, and these are sort of four of the standard ones. So we're gonna go ahead and say back on that. And then if we continue to go down here really quickly, for API version, we're going to go ahead and set the default value to 2023.05.15. There's a link in the resources that show you all of the different schema API versions that you can utilize. We're going to say it's required and it's internal, so we don't want people to use it. Actually, you know, we'll say it's advanced, so if they want to change it, they can. And then we need to go to content type. We're going to go ahead and set that to application JSON. 
we're going to say it's required and we're going to say it's internal. Nobody's going to ever need to change that. And then lastly, we're going to go over to the body, which is the most important part. It's absolutely going to have to be required. And then let's look really quickly at the different settings in the body. So we have a frequency penalty and we're going to set that default value to seven. It's required and we're going to say it's advanced. So this is where I'm giving you essentially the ability to change everything about the call if you want to and only if you want to. Max tokens here, we're going to go ahead again. We're going to say it's required, but it's 2000 by default and it's advanced. And we're going to, for content, this is the actual content that we're sending in. That's going to be required. And then it's just text. The role is interesting because there are three roles essentially that we can use here. It's going to be required. And we're going to say static. And we have three roles. We have the system. That's the system prompt. We have user. That's the user asking a question. And we have assistant, which is the assistant responding. So we're going to go ahead and put those options in there for that. And then quickly moving over to presence penalty, we're going to say again, zero is the default. It's required and it's advanced. So we don't want to necessarily put those types of values in front of the end user if we don't need to, because, and that's why we're sort of choosing advanced, right? Because those default values are typically going to work pretty well. For the stop sequence, we're not actually going to need that. We're just going to leave that here. It's not going to be required. Temperature, we're going to give it a default of zero. We're going to say it's required. We're going to say it is advanced. And then top P, we're going to do very similar. We're going to say a default value of one. It's required and it's advanced as well. OK, so now we've essentially created the request. Now let's go ahead and create the connector really quick. This could take just a few seconds. So we will go ahead and wait for all that to be created. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay. So now what we need to do to test it is we need to create a new connection to it. And I'm going to go jump over to Azure OpenAI. And so I've got my key right here. I'm not going to show you guys, but I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go back over here. And so we're just going to create this connection. And then now if I jump back here, I need to refresh this so that it's going to pick it up. So now we actually have a connection. Now we can say GPT-335 Turbo. This does not, this test UI doesn't show you the options the way we'll see it in Power Automate here in a second. But we're going to say that, and then we're going to say the role is user, and we can say the constant is how are you. So we're just essentially asking how the bot's doing. Okay, we got a response back. I don't have feelings as an AI, but I'm here to help you with any questions. So now we know it works, which is awesome. And now we can just say update connector. And then we're pretty much done at this point. There's an additional step I'm not going to show you for time purposes. But if your company's using multiple Azure OpenAI resources, which is fairly common, especially with the limitations right now, you can create an additional connection parameter that would allow someone to override that URL. So each resource is going to have potentially that host URL, and then it's going to have that API key. So I'm going to post a blog post on that. So if you're interested, by all means, check that out here in the future. OK, so now lastly, really quick, just to sort of see how does this all work, we're going to go to my flows. We're going to create a new flow. We're going to do an automated cloud flow. We're going to do we're going to call this tweets and we're going to say when an item is created in SharePoint. So I have over here in Giraffe Geeks, I have this tweet queue. And so this queue is basically where the giraffes are putting in potential tweets to use. And then we're going to analyze them and see if they're positive, negative or neutral. So I'm going to go ahead and select that site. I'm going to go ahead and select the tweet queue. So now I'm looking for just when new things are created there. Then I'm going to go over here to custom. And then this is where we're going to choose Giraffe AI and we have our chat completion. And so we're going to go ahead and select that. The model, this is where we get that nice drop down. So we've got GPT-35 Turbo. And for the role, we're going to say this is the user. And then we're going to say, we're going to just actually put in here the title, the title coming from the item. And we're going to just put a line, sort of a line break here. And we're going to say classify the above text as positive, negative, or neutral. We're going to say only respond with one of these three values. OK, and then everything else, again, we're not going to really need to change any of this. The next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to do update item. And so once we get that value, we're going to want to actually change a field that's in the SharePoint list. And so we're going to go back here. We're going to go to Draft Geeks. We're going to go and pick the tweet queue and then the id is going to be the id of this thing that came in okay we'll go ahead and save it and then we will test it and we will add a tweet in here really quickly okay so i'm going to manually test it it's going to wait for me 
And we're going to go in here and we're going to say. Let us know what you think about our new movie. We think it stinks. And we'll go ahead and click save. OK, and so now we should see this pick up here. In a moment, OK, and there it did. So we can see that we went put in here. Let us know what you think about our new movie, right? There's then the rest of our response. And you can see that ChatGPT gave us back the response just negative, which is what I was hoping it would do. And then we updated that item. And so now if we refresh this, we'll actually see that the classification. With I updated the wrong. I didn't actually update the value that would that would help. So what we should have done here is we should have gone in here and said the classification value and then put that in there as the op. So what we would do here is we would say custom value. And then what we want to do is look at the actual completion here and we want to actually pick. Yes, the content. OK, we'll go ahead and skip that for now since I think we're at time. We're a minute over, but that is the demo. So thanks, everyone. Thank you.